everybody from Pittsburgh Soccer Now. This is Zach Weiss, the Duquesne beat writer for the men's women's soccer team here on the Duquesne side, speaking to uh, Dom here. Dom is the starting goalkeeper on the Duquesne men's soccer team recently, a, a week or so ago, was named the Defensive Player of the Week. Dom, how are you doing today? I'm great, Fence Zach. It's good to be back with you again. How are you doing? Hanging in there, hanging in there. I think we're all, you know, the weather's changing and I'm feeling every last bit of it, but there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Dom, for you, it's been an unconventional journey here with the men's soccer team. There's been plenty of highs and of course there's been plenty of lows which have gotten you to these highs. Just summarizing your journey as a whole, I know that's not an easy thing to do to paint a broad picture to start this thing off, but how would you describe the path that you took going from Australia to here and dealing with these highs and lows and trying to manage them? Well, um, thanks for the question, Zach, to start off. Um, so for me, like, it was definitely um, an interesting path to take, you know, I guess, like, I feel like now a lot of Australians are now starting to come over to America and play college soccer. So to jump on that wave and really kind of feel what it's all about for me was always something that I was always interested in. So um, after signing my letter of intent and joining Duquesne, you know, I was able to get that opportunity. So I'm very grateful that like Duquesne has given me the opportunity, you know, to come across and do this. But um, yeah, I started off here in 2018, you know, I was 20 years old, so a bit of an older freshman, but um, yeah, it was definitely um, a different experience to me. Um, freshman year definitely didn't go as I probably would have planned it to, I guess in the back of my mind. Um, I think I ended up playing six games or so um, at the start of that time. And um, I did face a bit of adversity in that time. Um, but in a sense, you know, looking back on it now, I think this is important as well for, I guess, my career as a whole, because um, as I said to you last week in an interview, I never really had to face any adversity. During my soccer career, it's always been quite high. I've always been very happy about that. But in a way, I feel like this shaped my maturity as a footballer and a person. So sophomore year, I only played one game. I actually played against Davidson, who we're playing against Saturday. And um, it wasn't a great game. We conceded five goals um, and inevitably didn't make the A-10 tournament from that game. We lost from the draw of a hat. So I think sophomore year was a good year for me, though, as a whole. Even though I only played one game, I was able to build up my confidence with the coaching staff, with Chase, myself, and really, I guess, understand, you know, how good of a player I can be when I'm playing confident and um, I guess I got to settle down and get adjusted to life in Pittsburgh more than I was able to my freshman year. And that also is attributed to having a really good summer season down in Alabama with AFC Mobile. I had a real fun time down there and we're quite successful. Um, but yeah, junior year, um, that was last spring due to COVID, obviously we had to play in the spring. Um, I think that I was very grateful to be able to get the starting job off the coaches and we only had a seven game abbreviated season, but it was definitely great to be able to play, you know, as the starting goalkeeper and push myself. And I guess, you know, the reason why I'm here is to prove how good I am and see how far I can potentially go in this game. So it wasn't, I guess, the season we'd hoped for, but I feel like in a sense, I feel like this team has been like a process um, pushing towards the future. I feel like we've definitely moving in the right direction. And it shows, I think, this semester right now, our fall season, my senior year, um, just goes to show you that, um, like like I said, the program's going in a great place, I think. And we're moving onwards and we can't stop now. You know, the hard work never stops. We need to keep pushing on because our goal is not just to make the A-10 tournament. I know, like, that's like a low bar to set, but I still think for us, that's a very good bar to set and really test ourselves because the A-10 is a very strong conference, very hard to win away, as we spoke about and very hard to get points. So, you know, for me, senior year now, um, I think we've done well so far. I'm very happy with how I've been playing and how the boys have been playing more importantly and where the program is going. I don't know, I just guess that for me, my goal is to make sure I leave the program in a better place that I found it. So every day, as long as I can help improve the program is a goal of mine. Going back to freshman season, obviously as an international player, there's a lot promised, whether it's as a staff or whether it's just internally with you saying you've never faced adversity before. When you face that adversity, which was specifically getting pulled after halftime of the Robert Morris game after starting those 
string of games, inevitably just a hot hand kind of a substitution. How hard was that in the moment to take? And how long did, how did that serve as a motivation? And how, just what were the degrees of emotion as you went on through that freshman season? Oh yeah, for me, that was a bit of pill to swallow, being taken out of a game, you know, where it was only one or, but um, I think in terms of the long run, um, although that was a moment where I was very unhappy with the situation, um, I guess, like I said, I was able to grow from that situation. Um, there's definitely no hard feelings, you know. Um, I think that that moment, like, if that's something that needs to be done that's for the team, you know, being a team sport, you just got to accept that and move on. You know, my mentality always after it is to, you know, go out there and continue proving that I should be playing regardless of the situation. Um, but, yeah, taking that moving forward, like you said, I just made it my goal, I guess, even by the end of that semester, moving on to the spring as well, was really just to prove to coach that, you know, I am like the better um, one here. You know what I mean? And I had to prove it to him every day, whether that be in the fitness test, I need to make sure I win that, you know, whether that be in training, I need to make more saves, whether that be, I guess, my grades or lifting, I made it my goal to win everything I potentially could. And I think that really put me in a good shape for success here at Duquesne. And even though, like I said, I didn't play much in that sophomore season preceding that or after that, it was um, it definitely put me in a great spot to be able to take over once Robbie had, and Scotty had graduated from Duquesne. How tough was that? Obviously, I mean, you could look at it where you had two seniors, one of which was undoubtedly in the depth chart ahead of you and Robbie. And of course, just how hard was it just for you seeing it wasn't maybe just look, it's just not my time right now. And of course, there's a pride thing that goes along with that. But at the same time, realizing that it only added to your work ethic, it only added the fuel to your fire, and it only just made you focus more on being the best teammate possible. Yeah, no, I agree. I think as well during that time, I guess I really had to work on, I guess, you know, being a really good teammate, like you said. And that definitely goes a long way. And um, even though I wasn't dressing at the time, I really tried to make sure that like Rob and Scott were in the absolute best shape they could be to start a game. Whether that be, you know, bringing Robbie water, whether that be doing extra volleys with him, making sure he's got extra long balls, you know, making sure he needs anything done. I was able to help him out and be there for him. And as well as Scotty as well, when he was dressing. So um, I think it helped me become like a better teammate as well. And I also just want to be the best teammate I could be. Because like this, there's no place I feel like for people who sit there and complain and whine. You know what I mean? Like if you want to prove a point, you got to be actively doing something. Whether you're not dressing, you need to be proving that you're still a good teammate. You need to be proving that you're still a good person. You know that's probably the most important thing: being a good person. And I really do try to pride myself on becoming a good person, um, whether that be you know to just like my teammates or people off the field as well. I really want to be able to, I guess have that picture painted where people say, okay, like, you know, he's a really good guy, you know, regardless of what he's going through, he's still going to push through, help his teammates out, you know, and work hard because at the end of the day, you know, if I just sat back and did absolutely nothing and complained, like what good am I to the program? You know what I mean? So that's my take on that. Where does your work ethic come from and how has your work ethic mentally improved at Duquesne? So I feel like for me, my work ethic really comes from just being obsessed with being as good as I possibly can be. So like I've um, been in situations, I guess, where, you know, I have had the opportunity to do like really good things in my footballing career. And I include even playing at Duquesne as something, as something that's really great that can help push me in my future, in my footballing career. So knowing that I have all these opportunities at my hands really helps me with my work ethic and as well knowing the quality I have as a goalkeeper I know that if I can continually play as hard as I can and work as hard as I can I do feel like I'm able to play at the next level so for me um, if I waste a day of training that's that's not helpful you know what I mean end of the day as a student athlete here at Duquesne or even like at any school you know you have a four to five year clock and those years go real quick I remember when I was a freshman, first talking to you, Zach, you know what I mean? And I was like, damn, you know, I'm going to be here. She was like, you're going to be here forever. You're a, you're a first year student. You know what I mean? Now I'm a senior and 
if I didn't have this COVID year and potentially not be able not to play again, you know, this would be my last semester of playing. So, you know, it really goes to show that like, you know, you have to work hard while you have the opportunity. So for me, the work ethic comes from knowing my quality and knowing I'm on a certain time limit here and I have to make it work. So for me, those are the best like ways to explain why my work ethic, where my work ethic comes from, but also facing the adversity as we spoke about, I guess it helped reignite my work ethic as well, because I feel like when you don't have times where, you know, you face adversity, you get comfortable and you accept sometimes subpar as the norm. And I guess it really just pressed me to not accept a bad day. Like there could never be a bad day anymore. It had to be a day where I had to make it work. With that Davidson game, I know I know you you look maybe necessarily in the short term at that result, the five no result, where obviously your team was on the short end of the stick. But for you personally, looking at that game now, was that maybe the catalyst for this entire thing? Just it was kind of middle of the year. It would have been easy to, for them to just go with a senior, but the team decided to go with you, and maybe it gave you a little bit of extra motivation for off season training, and that you took it, moved forward with it. No, I agree. Um, this is also like a major credit to my teammates because even when I guess I was going through like a very tough time of my career here, I do feel like a lot of my teammates were very, very confident with me and always stood by me. Because like I said, during this, the sophomore year, I feel like my performances and practice were very good. And, you know, I had a lot of respect for my teammates. I feel like I had to earn that back. So having that from them, and I guess knowing where I stood, even though I wasn't dressing, I knew that I was good enough to be there for me was the most important thing. And, you know, like I said, it's always trying to prove people wrong and prove, okay, I'm good enough to be here. So I'll show it. So it definitely was a catalyst, I guess, showing that, you know, I am trusted to play. I knew I would be, and I was grateful for the opportunity as well. It's a shame we couldn't get the result and move forward and potentially have another chance to be able to, be picked to start again as well but it definitely helped me I guess mentally um be able to understand okay like you know the coaches trust me because this is a really big game we needed to win and they were happy to start me and like go forward with me and you know after the game I remember coach was very happy with me he said although the result was five no he said like I'm proud of you you still played well and that for me was very reassuring Transitioning that into your spring training sessions with the team during the, I guess you can call it an off season. There really isn't an off season in soccer, but looking at things, Chase said it was one of the best off seasons, one of the best spring sessions he had ever seen. Just what did you notice about your play improving, whether it's your physical game or equally as importantly, your mental game in that time period? Is this the spring season just gone, Zach, or the one before that? Uh, I, I mean, if you want to hearken on both of them, I just know that he mentioned the spring season. Okay. Um, so like for the spring season, even the one before that, I guess at that point, you know, I'm the last older goalkeeper at that point. So I know, you know, this is potentially my time. Um, we're going towards another big fall season. I know Chase had a really good schedule plan for us. I think we opened up UVA which would have been exciting. I know we had some real good players. I think Daryl DK was still playing there, which is crazy because he's a national team player now. But um, yeah, I was very excited to be able to be a part of that team. And, you know, moving forward, I knew going into that season, um, Chase would tell me that I'd be one of the starters. So I was very happy to have that opportunity and to have, you know, shown my worth to be able to be here at the program still. Um, I definitely made sure, you know, I worked very hard, like I said. For me, I'm very self-motivated. And I think that really helps, you know, with me in my position. Because as a goalkeeper, you need to be self-motivated. Otherwise, if you're not self-motivated, they'll bring someone in to help motivate you. And that's not always a positive sign. So um, I'll make sure I was always, always self-motivated. And it's also a credit to Adam and Seb, our other coaches as well, um, because they would always stay back. We do finishing together and we'd work hard every single day. We'd stay out there. We finished at 9.30. We were there to almost 10.30 some mornings, still practicing, still doing finishing, crossing, you know, goal kicks, whatever we want to work on. And I just felt like I was in a, I was very sharp and in a very good place at that time. It was very unfortunate because, you know, we, had, we played a game. We played the Hounds. I played really well. I think the team did really well as well against the professional club which is a huge positive for the program, but it was taken away from COVID, unfortunately, which um, 
which really hurt because I know a lot of the boys are prepared for that. But moving forward to the spring just gone, um, I don't feel like for me, having my first proper starting like competitive season was very good to get it under my belt. Although it was only seven games, I felt like it was a good precursor to the season that we are in currently right now this fall. I got to be able to play for the school, play consistently, which helps you become more comfortable as well. Um, and I think for me, the biggest thing that I struggled with maybe as a freshman as well, was just not getting the opportunity to truly be comfortable starting and playing with the boys I play with. So now that I have that, I feel like I'm able to move forward. I also feel like, I guess, like, you know, the only person who can really stop me is myself. So I guess continually working hard in the gym, you know, doing treatment, and doing the extras at practice, I made a big difference. That's definitely put me in probably the best like physical and mental state that I've been like ever been in potentially in my career. Player coach relationships always have their peaks and their valleys throughout, especially in college soccer. Just how would you characterize those points and trying to make sure for your end and on theirs that the lows just weren't personal, they just were business and maybe both sides had to mature too. No, I agree. Like, you know, football, soccer is, um, it's a sport where, you know, you're not always going to get along. You know, you can, you may get along with one coach, you may not get along with another, but um, that's just life, unfortunately. And although sometimes like, like in my situation, I guess the situation, like we were always like had a very professional relationship. You know what I mean? I respect coach. I know that he respects me too. And he's given me at the end of the day an opportunity to succeed here at Duquesne. So I'm super grateful for him and everything he's done for me in my four and one more potential year here. So I'm really happy about that. Um, but like I said, I knew it was never personal. I know it's only business at the end of the day. And like, I'm an adult, you know, I'm 24 years old now, Zach. So I, I understand that end of the day, you know, coach is just doing what he thinks is right. Um, whether that be something I agree with or not, you know, that's for me to decide. And whether uh, he, he agreed with what I had to say, you know, that's what he has to decide as well. But I understand that it can be a cutthroat business and you just need to either, you have to just rise to the occasion or some people crumble. So I'm just glad I was able to rise to the situation, this circumstance. Chase described your journey as perseverance, uh, the simplest way that he put it. I mean, it's a very big word. It's a very broad word to describe your career, but how maybe can you relate to that word? And maybe d does that word define your story so far? I definitely think perseverance could be a good word to describe the story. Um, like I said, you know, like I definitely wasn't in a very good place mentally or, you know, playing wise at that time. So just having the opportunity to be able to I guess, proved to coach that I was as good as I said I am and showed I am before I came here was important to me. If I didn't persevere or push to get out of that situation, I don't feel like we'd be here talking today, Zach. So um, for me, I definitely think perseverance would be a great way to describe it. I'm very happy with the way I was able to push and get out of the situation. But at the end of the day, it has to be like belief. You have to believe in yourself. And I really did believe in myself and really just took advantage of the opportunities I have here. You know, I always say to people, especially freshmen coming in, you know, like you can really make of this experience whatever you want to make of it. You know, if you want to come and sit down and say, okay, we don't have what Kentucky has. We don't have what Pitt has. You know, that's completely fine. You probably won't do that well here. But if you want to come in here and realize that we have everything that you need to be successful and you're going to take advantage of that every single day, then you can rise and be as good as you want to be. So for me, I'm just blown away by even the facilities Duquesne has. I never was in like a situation where I had this even at home. So for me, being able to do all of this and take advantage of what we have, I think also helps. And that belief in myself definitely made a huge difference. You're on a team now where obviously you maybe in a sense started from the bottom and as Drake would say, now you're here and you have players maybe on your team that are in the same spot as someone as a captain that has experienced that. 
and as a coaching staff that has seen that, for you to be able to tell them your story and their experiences, how do you think you can spin this forward and be that role model and be that captain in that sense? I think, honestly, it would be the saying the same thing to you as I said just then, you know what I mean? Like your experience can only be how you want it to be at the end of the day. Like I said, we like if you want to stay back and do extras, Adam and Seb will always be there for you. They are just like real good down to earth guys and they'll stay back and they can literally play with you. You know, they're still running and they're still moving. You know what I mean? And they're just top guys. Chase will do the same. Every time I'd ask Chase to stay back and do extra with me, he'd do extra with me. When Keith was not there, Chase is kicking balls at me. So um, it's really what you want to make it to be. And I understand some people may not be feeling good about themselves. They might be low on the depth chart, unfortunately. But you just have to remember that these things can be temporary and they will always be temporary. You know what I mean? You'll move up, you'll become older and you'll definitely get more opportunity. I think in preseason, we played our whole roster against West Virginia. So you're always going to get a chance. Chase never really doesn't give you a second chance. You really have to have pushed him to never get a chance again. He's always forgiving and he always definitely, I think the thing he said to me was that, you know, we're just boys and we make mistakes, but the biggest thing for him is re-education. So if you can continue to work hard, you may be in a crap spot right now, but things really do can get better. You just have to put your head down and work hard sometimes. And I'm grateful I did.